this is Yishai Fleischer yes. in the vicinity yes. of Hebron. People don't understand Kiryat Arba. Is it a suburb of Hebron? What is it? It's a sister city. Kiryat Arba is our sister city. There's about 9,000 people that live here and 1,000 people live in Hebron. Together we're a block, the two sister cities, Hebron and Kiryat Arba, a block of 10,000 people. And uh, surrounded by what? Surrounded by the beautiful hills of Judea, uh, first and foremost. And this is the cap one of the capitals of Judea. And we also have about 200,000 of our cousins, uh, Arabs that live mostly under the Palestinian Authority. Uh, well, there are families that don't get along. If uh, cousins cannot get along, are, are they like Hatfields and McCoys? There are some elements within the P Palestinian Authority that are, uh, uh, that, that are not friendly. There's Hamas elements as well. So there are definitely, there's definitely some friction. There's a lot of army to defend the Jewish presence here. But essentially, um, we have a joint future and we've got to move towards that. Is there a, a movement on their side to, to joint future? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you think that they want to be under the regressive jihadist regime of the PA uh, and, and that steals their money and then turns their children into, into children uh, jihadists, child, child uh, suicide bombers? They don't want that. And so uh, there's definitely a movement of people that want to revolt against the PA. Ask any Arab on the street what he thinks about the PA. He'll tell you they despise them. And uh, it's time to do away for them. It's time to do away. I think one of the great missions of our generation is to do away with the two-state solution. I really think that that is the call of this generation, is to move away from the two-state solution and find uh, a new way to move forward. Uh, when President Trump, who has demonstrated uh, sympathy and empathy for Israel's situation, he still uh, refers to a two-state solution. Is that because he's being ill-advised? Uh, he's referred to two-state solution, one-state solution. I think President Trump has made it clear that he wants to see people on the ground make the decision for themselves. That's the right attitude. The right attitude is not to push, pressure Israel to do the right thing or anything like that. We are the indigenous peoples. We and the Arab peoples around here, we're from this region. And, and the uh, 350 million Arabs will figure out a way to deal with the 6.5 million Jews. And us 6.5 million Jews will figure out a way to deal with our Arab cousins. And we're going to make those decisions on, on this side of things. And when the United States is supportive of... of uh, of true, true steps forward, not steps that empower jihadists, not steps that empower foreigners from Tunis to come and, and, and subjectify their own people and then create war against us. When we stop empowering those people, then we uh, have an opportunity to move forward, both Arabs and Jews. So driving up to here, I, I felt uh, a little tension uh, filming out the window of the car. I felt, uh, you know, uh, as if people thought that uh, I was an intruder, for instance. Is that their attitude? Well, first thing, just being a person coming from America, you might not be used to the milieu and the atmosphere around here. The atmospherics are different. It's very Middle Eastern here. Okay, It's a lot closer to Baghdad than it is to New York. And so you may feel feelings that you're not kind of used to the way people are looking at you. And, and there are elements, uh, what I would call the jihadist elements, that don't accept our presence here. There are elements like that. And then there's other people. There's many silent people that can't say what they think because they're being repressed yeah. uh, by a regime that will torture you if you say things like, I think Israel's fine, and I think my cousins have a right to live here, or that even the Quran itself says that Jews have every right to live in the land of Israel. So you have a lot of people like that. On the other hand, I, I will be remiss if I didn't say that there are certainly elements uh, that reject Jewish presence here, but they'll, it's just tough for them because we're going to be here, we're coming back home. This is a godly promise. This is a, uh, uh, an incredible movement. It's, it's Zionism. It's, it, it's, a, it's a great vision coming to fruition in our time. And there's nothing going to stop us. Just, in, just, just, just as a, a, an aside, I'm much more comfortable driving from Jerusalem here than I would be wandering around Chicago. Driving through bad neighborhoods in Chicago. Well, walking around Chicago. I mean, you know how many people have been shot in Chicago every day? Yeah. Uh, it's much safer here. But there's a, a, a sacredness about the Jewish life here that's, that's different from being Jewish elsewhere, isn't there? Well, this is the homeland. I like to call it the heartland of the Holy Land. And that's what I call Judea and Samaria. This is the, what's called in the Bible the, the land of the Amorites, the central mountain region of Judea and Samaria. This is where Jewish history happened. And we also have here not only historical, but, but, a, but a, a continuing emphasis on visiting and being 
pilgrims to this land. So here in Hebron, we of course have the tombs of the fathers and the mothers. So people come to connect here, just like Caleb in the Bible came to pray in this place. So too we continue to come to pray in this place. And of course, the heart of it all, Jerusalem, you know, the holy city. This is where, where heaven meets earth. This is where uh, calling God is a local call. And, uh, and, and that is the, 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 the great, uh, unique powers of the Holy Land. It's a land of blessings. Mm -hmm. And people come here to, to, to connect and to be blessed. When I have prayed here with you and your friends, there's a special sacredness. Is that as a result of the community? No, well, the community that we have here in Hebron is a community that has been here almost without break for 3,500 years. Uh, and it's always been a brave community uh, that has kept this place open and safe. Somebody said to me yesterday, would you guys consider yourselves the protectors of the tombs of the fathers and mothers? And I said, that's exactly what we consider ourselves. And so uh, it's a great merit, but it's not the community that makes it. The community is a continuation uh, uh, of an ancient heritage. And again, the founders of our peoplehood and also the founders of Western civilization, of monotheistic civilization, many, my, my, big part of uh, Eastern civilization, and, and, and really uh, it's what uh, Vice President Pence said when he was here at the Knesset. He said, uh, two-thirds of the world consider Abraham their forefather in faith. Forefather in faith. So that's what this place is about. But is there a, a sharedness that cousins would have uh, at the tomb of the patriarchs? Uh, ostensibly, yes. You know, I'd like to think that Hebron, while it's a flashpoint of the conflict, is also a place that is actually uh, has the potential of being the beginnings uh, of cooperation and understanding because we have a joint father here, Abraham. Okay, uh, but I think that the Arab world today uh, has lost a little bit of sense of, of that ancient heritage. They've got to get it back. There's a lot of people who do think that way, but but some but the uh, the jihad element uh, within the Arab world is dominant, and that's very sad. Um, and as I tell them oftentimes, uh, your civilization is being destroyed because of hate, because you have a lot of, you have too much hate within your system, within, within your uh, society. Uh, when we drop away from that hate, get back to original principles, and do what the Bible tells us, which is honor thy father and thy mother, and I think that what Abraham would have wanted is to see uh, children, his beloved children, get along. Are you seeing immigrants coming from Europe nowadays? Uh, that's a more uh, that's a more general Israel question. As I saw, there's been some drop in immigration, but of course, you know, with uh, the Jeremy Corbyns of this world, and some people say that there hasn't been as big of a British Zionist since Balfour, uh, in the form of Jeremy <laughs> Corbyn, and that uh, that you know there is. I have spoken to British people that they indeed verify that that they, that they are uh, considering leaving. By the way, just an interesting aside. One of the reasons I think people are going to be leaving England is not only because there's an anti-Semitism at the top. There's also this jihadist element at the bottom. Right, so that together on that the streets, that gives license to the jihadist element at the bottom to, to act out. I think people are feeling that Jews are sensitive to when the ground is burning underneath their feet. Uh, at the same time, you know, Israel is a catch-all for people running away from uh, from anti-Semitism. But we also would love to see Jewish people coming here to be part of the great project, mm -hmm. and from love and from a sense that Israel is a great destiny, a great, a, a great project, a, a great way to connect to God. Sanctity, as you said. So there's more to it than it's, it should, first and foremost, be a protectorate, a defense for the Jewish people. But after that, at a much greater level of really being in love with this and being in love with God and being in love with destiny, this is the time that we're living in.